be a Chaim Kenon. We got had a shibla book from him, and he describes in how in Zechariah, in Zechariah describes Zechariah ten the exiles of Judah will return to the land of Israel, the war against the heathen and defeat them. The Messiah, son of David, would rule and consolidate his rulership immediately. And the ten tribes shall fight against the Gentiles, beat them, and their hearts will rejoice. They shall return from their places of dispersion, and so on. And as Zachariah notes that both the Judah and the ten tribes are two, three different stages in the end times. God will save them, they will be in trouble, so it will be probably uh, apparently against the same enemy. Edom will be oppressing both the ten tribes and Judah. God will save them, they shall become warriors, they shall defeat the enemies. And uh, these uh, two prophecies, uh, 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 these are experiences that both halves will, will benefit from. Uh, so too, as uh, how we understand it, in the end times it will be, we're not at the end times. First of all, we don't know how things will turn out at the end times. The Bible indicates, but, uh, but we, uh, it's, it's not always certain how the time, how the, chron the chronological s sequence of different events when they fit in, how they will happen. But uh, the indications are that in the end times, Judah will be oppressed. This could have been what happened in the Second World War. It may or may not have been the Second World War, maybe something in the future. And then Joseph, the ten, uh, uh, Messiah son of Joseph will come and will help Judah, and he will take a re revenge upon those who had been re oppressing Judah. He will also Help Judah return to the land of Israel. So you could say this has already happened, maybe this has already happened, or maybe what has happened is just a pre adumbration of what will happen in the future, a kind of preparation, a, a, a kind of preliminary rehearsal. At all events, it's a possibility. Some people say this is what happened. The Jews were oppressed, they were being wiped out, and they said, well, what the Allies came and uh, defeated the enemies, the oppressors, the forces of Edom, and in effect saved the remnant of Jews from being exterminated. After that the Jews had already begun to return to the land and that they uh, asserted their independence but uh, to a great, good degree almost up to the, up until the end the British helped them. The last minute the British uh, tried to backtrack. That is another episode, something separate. But nevertheless, they also they, 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 they helped and they didn't help. They, didn't, they, they themselves didn't really know what happened. And the Jews, at all events, the Jews managed to assert their independence. And it was a good thing that the British had tried to backtrack because then the Jews were no longer obligated to limit themselves. They could take what they conquered, or at least a good portion of it, and they set up the State of Israel. The early stages of the State of Israel the British did help the State of Israel, even though they did not publicize it at the beginning. Also, France helped the State of Israel. Norway helped the State of Israel. So did Holland and Belgium. And the State of Israel managed to get by and, and, and go ahead. And then America took over and became the, the bank the bankroller, the, 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 the money, the supplier of resources to the State of Israel and help it progress and keep on progressing as it is continuing to do so. So you could say in this case we see, see we see a foreshadowing of what the ten tribes would do. Because we identify the people doing these things with the forces of Joseph, with Joseph. And that is what they're doing as it was described that Joseph would do. So that is a possibility. So there and so there if it's worth knowing what the what is spoken about the Mashiach Ben Joseph, what Mashiach Ben Joseph will do, because we read the newspapers and we see this is what is happening. But we can't be sure. It might be. It might be. This is might be the real thing, or it might be a, a kind of rehearsal leading up to the real thing. I sometimes took the uh, uh, took the idea of, of a rehearsals. One could say of leading up to the real thing, uh, to uh, liking it to a uh, to a um, a play. You have a play. I know you have a uh, plays of Shakespeare, something of those. Okay, you have a play, you have a movie, I don't know. And you have a play, and the play has a script. So you get the people together, and uh, you, uh, you, you get the people together, and you say that uh, you have, you have uh, how many, you have four men, three women, 
two boys, you have this and that, and you change the roles around. You give everyone a chance to play a role that is suited to their, to them. And each time, each time, they rehearse the play. And so sometimes one person has one role, sometimes he has another, until you sort it out who is best, who best, best fits into each of the roles. And until and until the end, uh, and you do this rehearsal, and each time you rehearse it, and it gets better and better, and it gets closer and closer to the real thing, to what is actually going to happen, until you get up to the grand opening, where everything is as it should be, as it was supposed to be from the beginning, but it took you a while to to sort it out co correctly. So to that history, history repeats itself. So all the time you have the same protagonist or similar protagonist fulfilling certain set roles. And then it changes from one person to another, so one nation to another, so it flits back and forth. Uh, and it keeps on going, keeps on progressing. So this is, that could be what we are in now. We might be in the end times, or we might be in a kind of rehearsal leading up to the end times. Uh, and at all events, we seem to be getting closer and closer to what will happen in the end times. Another point is that in the end times, in the end times, people will return to their tribes, to their tribal ancestry. In the end times, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 48 describes how when they return to the land of Israel, how the land of Israel will be divided up into 12 tribes, each tribe receiving a portion. Also, we have a tradition that uh, Mashiach ben Yosef, apparently the first Mashiach ben Yosef and after that Mashiach ben David will both be instrumental in letting the tribes each member, each individual Israelite know what tribe he belongs to. So this is also important. Uh, we won't all. It's worth knowing. A person should uh, understand the root of his soul goes according to his tribe and uh, it happens that the people from uh, other tribes who might be from the Judah consisted of the tribes of, uh, of, um, of Judah of Benjamin Levi and uh, but also minority representatives of the other tribes in the end times all those from the other tribes will go back to their tribes from the other tribes will become members from Judah Many Jews were assimilated amongst the Gentiles, amongst peoples in Europe, amongst whom we do find the Ten Tribes. So that too is a phenomenon. And we, uh, we have uh, Ezekiel uh, describes how it will happen in the end times the land of Israel will be divided into the twelve tribes. In Ezekiel 48, the twelve tribes will be divided up from north to south. The northern part shall go to seven tribes, Dan, Ashur, Naphtali, Manasseh, Ephraim, Reuben, Judah. After that, after Judah, that is after those seven first tribes, there will be another portion, a portion of the, of, with the temple, the sanctuary will be the, the successor to the temple, the temple will be the next portion. Around the temple, there will be Cohen's and his priests and Levites. And and also, and also attached to that will be the section of the Prince of the Messiah. And in addition to that, there will be representatives from all of the tribes living there in this central capital, one could say in the middle of the land, according to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel 48 gives it, he lists it, he says, the prince, that is the Messiah, refers to the Messiah as the prince, and he shall have his own portion, and this portion shall be attached to the temple, and the town around the temple will be Levites and Cohen's, and also in that area, in this capital city, will be representatives of all of the tribes, some of whom will be workers in the temple. After that, there will be five more tribes who will have their portions to the south. To the south will be Benjamin, after Benjamin will be Simeon, after Simeon will be Issachar, after Issachar will be Sebelon, after Sebelon Gad, and uh, that is, uh, this is the land, the verse says, this is the land which you will divide by lot as an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. These are their portions, says the Lord God. In addition to that, 
the Bible uh, division to the land stretching from the north to the north to the Euphrates and those areas of Western Europe and Northern Europe adjoining the Atlantic Ocean that had previously been populated by the ten tribes will also become part of the land of Israel and they too will be divided up amongst the tribes exactly how we don't know but this is another possibility also this also includes North America and perhaps Australia and New Zealand and we also find uh, found a source of possibility that North America is mentioned belong to the tribes in the end times which in light of what we've been teaching is worth knowing about this stick one stick says the Yosef the Yosef to Joseph to Joseph to Joseph the stick of Ephraim and of all of Israel, his companions, and of all of Israel, his companions of call Israel, have her up. The other stick says, the other stick says, the Yehuda, the Yehuda, and the children of Israel, but they Israel have her up. That is the other stick. So you have these two sticks. Two sticks in the, in the prophecy of, of Ezekiel 37. What does he say? What does he say here? He says, again, the word of the Lord came to him, he's saying, I, as for you, son of man, take the stick for yourself and write on it for Judah, for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, for Joseph, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then join them one to another for yourself. Join yourself into one stick and they will be quiet, become one in your hand. You have the two sticks. Join them one into another into one stick, one stick. And they shall become one, one in your hand. When the children of Israel ask you saying, Will you not show us what you mean by this? Say to them, Thus says the Lord, God, surely I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will join them with it, with the stick of Judah. I will take the stick of Joseph. I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will join them with it, with the stick of Judah, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and make them one stick. And they will be one in my hand. One in my hand, you see. The one stick, and they will be one in my hand, and the sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Then says to them, thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation, and the land on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will change, cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes and do them, then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob my servant, where your fathers dwell, and they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children, forever, and my servant David shall be their prince forevermore. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them, and multiply them, I set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, indeed I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel, and my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. So at present, even the end, at the end times, the ten tribes will return to the worship of one God. They are not necessarily have to convert a present unless they have one irresistible urge to do so. Someone who really wants to do so feels that's what he should do, he should do it. But that is not our message. And why are there reasons why they should not necessarily convert? First of all, this right identification is not an absolute one. It's not an absolute thing. You haven't, haven't got a birth certificate. You can't write a birth certificate on the basis of the evidence that we give you. Uh, this, again, our proofs, we believe they are very strong, convincing, but not everyone sees it. 
has to be some type of conviction that is widely accepted. It's not so. It needs strengthening. It also needs internalizing. We ourselves have to believe more in it and realize the reality of it. Speak to others of it. And biblical indications that the majority of the ten tribes will remain not Christian. They will remain Christians almost to the end. This will change through the agency of the Messiah, Messiah, Ben David, who comes at the end. So what happens until then? We don't know. But it's not our business. It's not our task to change that matter at present, or if ever. So, and we, it is not certain what the Bible says on this. So we've decided not to involve ourselves in this and to concentrate on what we know should be done. That's what I advise everyone to do that, concentrate on what you know should be done, what you're certain about. And let the Lord ten tribes know who they are. And leave the rest to the Almighty. And the message to the ten tribes is learn the Bible. Strengthen your Israelite tribal awareness. Spread the message to others like yourself. Support Britain people awareness. This is for the good of everyone. Support us because it's we are carrying out an activity, a, a deed, an ask, uh, a task that needs to be carried out for the good of all and uh, so we need support in doing this. And uh, most uh, ten tribe people should stay where they are. We should stay where they are. There are exceptions. Wherever they are they should take the message of Britain to heart. And the, the exceptions are exceptional. That is, the exceptions are exceptional. They are exceptions, they are not general rules. We also have a Rabbi Zadik Okoy in the Lublin, 1823-1900. He mentions something concerning the power of Joseph. He says that the power of Joseph, that is, Joseph has to come to fruition amongst the Gentiles. For over them was to be the main emphasis of his rule. Joseph was to be ruler over the Gentiles. Judah represents, Joseph represents the conquest of evil desires. Joseph represents the conquest of evil desires. When the wife of Potiphar tried to seduce him, he did not give in to her. He held back and he conquest, conquered his evil forces, his evil busts. He subdued them. And uh, these lusts paralleled the inner forces of the Gentiles. And he overcame them and that is how he's able to rule over them. But on the other hand, the power of Judah was with his brothers. Judah was not a big person, was not a ruler over Gentiles, but he was a ruler over the rest of his brothers. And Judah was able to uh, overcome the individual imperfections that each of his brothers had. So too, uh, Rabbi Fischel Ma'ayel, in a book on the tribes, a very good book, and he, he, uh, he also made a similar observation concerning the rulership of the children of Rachel, uh, concerning the, the uh, Book of Esther. The Book of Esther is the story of Esther, the Queen of Persia, and her uncle Mordecai. They were both from the tribe of Benjamin. And Benjamin was uh, the uh, son of Rachel. Both uh, Joseph and Benjamin were, were the children of Rachel. They had one mother. They were full brothers, having the same father and the same mother. And so uh, Benjamin had the aspects similar to those of Joseph. And he says the rulership of the children of Rachel, especially of Joseph, concerns the Gentiles. Joseph ruled over Egypt and other peoples. Mordecai in the book of Esther from the tribe of Benjamin became the second in command to the king of Persia. The task of the children of Rachel, that is the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, was to war against Edom and Esau, the arch enemies of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun from the tribe of Ephraim, he fought against the nations of the world and against Amalek from, the, from Esau. And so in their own way to King Saul and Mordecai, both of whom came from Benjamin. In the future, the task of the Messiah, son of Joseph, will be to save Israel from the Gentiles. On the other hand, the primary rulership exercised over Israel will come from Judah, that is, from the Messiah, son of David, in the end.